So I've been under embargo since July and it's been killing me because I can't tell you about some of the cool stuff that I have been doing this week. And, but now I can, the embargo's over, a uh, product has launched and I can tell you about a little factory tour that I got to do in Prague. So let's go check it out. In July, I got a surprise invite to go to the Prusa factory in Prague and check out the new Mark IV S. I was representing Tom's Hardware at a media event with other international reporters in the 3D printing niche. We got to see how the Mark IV S is made, checked out the filament lines, and popped into the research lab where they're running final checks on the automated farm system. That is a really cool machine. If we could just get them to break out one of those little Core XY printers and put it in a box, they would make so many people happy. Later on this year, I'll be following up with a tour of Printed Solid, which is their American manufacturing partner. And they just got a Prusmint line, and they're now assembling the Mark IV S for US buyers. At first glance, there's not a whole lot of difference between the Mark IV S and the Mark IV. This is entirely on purpose. If you're new to 3D printing, you may not realize that Prusa Research has been working on this design for something like 12 years. Joseph Prusa wanted a printer that could grow and evolve with the community, not something that turned into a doorstop after a couple of years. So before we go any further, let me say that if you got excited last year and bought a Mark IV, don't be kicking yourself thinking that you're going to miss out on all these cool new features. You're not. All the important stuff is available as an upgrade kit for about $99. Now, let me show you what's new. First, the most obvious thing is the fan. They took the swinging part cooling fan off and replaced it with this turbine that's mounted right in the front. It has a 360 fan shroud that wraps the nozzle in cooling. They said they looked at all kinds of fans and even blanket fans. Ugh. But luckily for us, they found this high power turbine that's just as quiet as the old fan. So you can put this in your office without any regrets. The second big improvement is a custom made high flow Bontec CHT nozzle. This increases the printer's volumetric flow significantly. It lets the machine print a little bit faster without needing to increase the acceleration rates or compromise mechanical properties. It can print Prusimit PLA with a 50% increase in flow and Prusimit PET-G at a 44% increase. And here's the really good news. This Prusa nozzle is the same size as the Mark IV and the XL nozzle. So you can give those older machines a little bit of a boost by just upgrading to this new Bontech nozzle. Side note, this high flow nozzle is such a huge improvement for high speed printing that Prusa is standing pat on their current formula of Prusament, and they don't see any need to tweak the formula for speed. You know how Prusament has a print farm? Some of them have been given an enclosure and a spool of PC carbon fiber to make parts that are stronger and more heat resistant. Parts that need a little bit of flex are still being printed out of PETG. And they've also switched to uh, in-house injection molding for the screen cover and a couple of the other little stable parts, which saves a whole lot of time at the print farm. So they can print more printers. Prusa made something special for all you modders. It's a GPIO board, so you can add lights and camera triggers to your machine. Now, this is an optional part, so you will have to buy it extra. But there's also an optional accelerometer now, so if you think you need it, you can have one. For the record, Prusa Research is still standing by their factory settings for input shaping and pressure advance. Last, we got this NCT antenna right on the machine. Why? Because Prusa is also releasing a phone app today. They've improved Prusa Connect, so now when you want to put your printer online, you just tap your phone on the side and you can get it all set up. This is also completely optional because they know not everyone wants their printer online. So if you don't want it, don't use it. Now, let's look at some prints. I didn't just want to take Prusa's word for it, so I printed a high flow test to see if this nozzle really does make that big of a difference. This one starts at that 20 millimeter a second cube and goes to 35 millimeters. And you can see where it fails, putting the volumetric flow right about 28 millimeters a second cube for Prusament, which is a pinch higher than the 24 millimeters a second cube they, they recommend. I also decided to throw some high speed filament at it and let it run again. And it was perfect. So that's 35 millimeters a second cube for at least this high flow filament, which is pretty incredible and shows there's more speed potential here if you go with a third party filament. 
I ran the same flow test on the A1 using ordinary Bamboo Lamb basic filament, which is made especially to keep up with all of the Bamboo Lab printers. It got 31 millimeters a second cube for Bamboo Lab PLA and 34 millimeters a second cube for the high flow, which means Bamboo Lab printers are already using a good high flow filament and their default setting at 21 millimeters a second cube is very conservative. Here is a Bonkers Benchy, which uses all kinds of slicer hacks to make a print in eight minutes. It's fun to watch, but you're not really gonna print this fast. So let's look at a normal Benchy. I'm still using speedboat rules for dimensions and Prusa Slicer's 25 millimeter a second profile. And I got this Benchy in 27 minutes. So remember, the Benchy was made to calibrate accuracy, not speed. Here's a Benchy from my A1. This one is using the same speedboat rules for dimensions and the normal slicer settings, which are in fact faster than the Mark IV-S, but the flow is only 21. This printed in 32 minutes. Now, to be fair, I also ran it in ludicrous mode and got it in 22 minutes. Okay, here's that twisty puzzle that we saw Joe Telling print on his giant Giga. And this is just 100%, but we can really see where the, uh, the Mark IV-S shines using this print. Ready? So it just fits together really nice. Okay, also see how shiny it is. I can't help it. Okay, I printed one of these on my A1 and um, the results aren't quite as good. See, cause uh, the tolerances aren't, tolerances aren't there. So, if I want this to work, I'm going to have to reprint it, um, probably change uh, some settings to, to get this to actually slide together. Great. So this is now stuck together. Uh, anyway, if you take a close look, you can see that the one off of my A1 uh, is a little bit matte and the one off of the uh, Prusa it's a little more shiny. It also does that. Uh, if you take a really close look, I have a photograph that might show it better, but inside here, it's a little rough and that's why it's stuck together now. Now, I love my A1 and I never thought the quality was poor. So let's take a look at some dragon eggs. And here you can see that on a print with some texture, they're pretty similar. So this is the Prusa and this is the A1. And the only way you can tell which one is which, oh, look at that, I got it wrong. <laughs> ah, okay. Now, this one is the Prusa and this is the A1. See, they're very similar. So the only way you can tell that there's something different about it, uh, this one has a slightly rougher interior and this one's pretty smooth on the inside but who's gonna look at the inside? Now, I know what you're thinking. The A1 has color and that's why people get this printer. And yes, the AMS Lite is hands down my favorite multi-spool contraption to work with. It's totally plug and play, it's easy to load, and it's easier to maintain than the regular bamboo AMS that we get with the Core XY machines. But if you're Team Prusa, you do have an option, the MMU-3. I've been testing one on a regular Mark IV for a couple weeks now, and it does five color prints and the results are just really nice. Uh, look at that, it's all nice and clean and the only waste you get is this purge block. Look at that. So of course I printed the same thing on my A1. Uh, and uh, also excellent color swaps. We can only do four colors with the A1 though, so. And we do get a purge block, but we also get a bunch of poop. Now the MMU3 is not plug and play and you can only buy it as a kit. It does require taking the tool head apart and you're gonna have to swap around some pieces. But if you've built a printer, it's not that big a deal. Time to get real, let's talk money. Prusa is holding down the price of their flagship printer. So you'll be able to get a fully assembled Mark IV-S for $10.99 and $7.99 for the do-it-yourself kit. I'm assuming the regular Mark IV will go on sale, so if you want to Prusa on a budget, 
now's the time to shop. The remaining kits should be a pretty good deal. Remember, these are upgradable printers, so going from a regular Mark IV to an S model will only cost you $99. If you want to go full color, you're going to have to add $299 uh, for that MMU3. Now, on the other hand, the Bamboo Lab A1 is honestly a good machine. It's fast, it's cheap, the quality is nice, and if you live by a micro center, you can buy one right off the shelf. I did a whole video on how to tune that poop because it will waste a good bit of filament if you're not careful with it. Right now, the A1 will only set you back $399 for a standalone machine or $489 for the AMS combo. Now, you might be wondering why the Prusa is so much more. Well, it's European. That's the reason I drive a Blazer and not a Land Rover. So there you have it, two very good bed slingers. And if you need the ultimate and high quality precision, the Prusa Mark IV S won't let you down. But if you need to watch your budget a little more, Bamboo's got your back. Either way, I hope you found this video enlightening. Happy printing.